Hey, in today's video, I'm going to review the book Escaping the Build Trap, which was written by Melissa Perry. She started her career as a product manager and was in different roles in different positions around product in different companies. And at some point, she started to build her own company for consulting others on how to build properly product strategies, product teams, product-led companies. And if you're not familiar with her, you should go check out her website and her LinkedIn. I will link them in the description down below. So this is going to be a review and a small summary of what the topics that are covered in the book are, but I'm not going to do a full explanation of the book. So I would still recommend you to go and purchase the book. I will add the link down below. So Melissa starts the book by making a fictional company called Marketly, which she uses a little bit to tell the story of what are the things that she has gone through her career, what are the different experiences that she has gone through as a product manager, the problems that she has found out, and how she has tried to solve them. And in the book, she takes the role of a consultant that is trying to help the company, not just the product managers, also the executive team, to change the mentality of the company to be a more product-led company. But why she started to write this book is because she herself was part of this build trap of building features that the company wanted to just ship out, ship more things, ship more features to the customers without realistically knowing if those features are going to actually benefit the customers. And that kind of rings a bell of one of the reasons why I started this channel but I'm not comparing myself to Melissa. But basically what happened is that when they started to track different features, they noticed that, well, nobody was necessarily using them or customers were not taking advantage of them. So this prompted her to start learning more, to be more curious about how to do a better job as a product manager. And eventually she opened her own consultant firm where she helps others with product management. So let's start with the review of the book. What is the main reason why this book exists is that companies are many times very heavily focused on output versus outcome. They're very heavily focused on delivering new features because we had to keep things rolling, we had to keep things moving, and not necessarily looking into how to bring value to customers, to stay focused and to concentrate on something that you know is going to actually bring that value. And value can mean many things, but in general, what you are looking for is that your customers are actually using the features that you're building. And as you can imagine, this also translates in building product-led organizations, companies that are very focused on different ways of working with product management that are very heavily focused on solving users' problems. And that's the way you actually drive the business. So now I will go through some of the key findings that I have gotten from this book. So the first of all is this uh, misconception of value in many companies out there. And yes, this includes many companies that are tech companies. So most of the companies are very focused on following things like uh, revenue, and they're very good at that, understanding how much money they have. They can do very well P&Ls, but they are not able to translate the value into some kind of metric. Um, because of the lack of understanding of how to translate value into metrics, many times what happens is that companies, they just think that the best metric to measure this is the output that we are producing. How many features are we shipping? And in the end, this ends up with pro managers being tasked into writing endless feature requests and handling uh, really big backlogs of different features that could be built into the product, which in the end is probably detrimental for the adoption of the product, mainly because you are probably overcomplicating your product too much by building features that nobody needs and probably they are just confusing the users that are trying to use your product. And also one of the problems that comes here is how those features are gathered. Mainly most of these features might come directly from a salesperson who has heard about something or a customer service person that again has heard about something. This might be something that a customer is asking for, but this is something that most of your customers are going to need. And this he goes to talk into what are the differences between project, product, and services. And many people confuse product and services also with projects. So features can be projects. You can just budget them. You can actually look into how long they're going to take to implement. You can specify them. You can track how the plan of the execution is going on. Products are vehicles to deliver value to users. And services typically are going to require human interactions. And most of the companies out there optimize mostly for projects, but they don't know how to optimize necessarily for products. 
Another big topic that she's covering in the book is how companies and organizations are laid out there. So first of all, she talks about sales-led organizations. Sales-led organizations are typically organizations where the salespeople actually gather requirements directly from the customers and basically tell them the product managers to deliver those requirements. But this means that usually they don't align with the main strategy of the company, or maybe there's not even a strategy in the company at that point, or there has never been. This sometimes can work in very early startups, especially when they're just trying to find ways of starting to get actually revenue to be able to survive, to continue growing and building a product. But in reality, this is a model that doesn't scale. As you can imagine, if you are getting requests from many different sources, they might not be aligned whatsoever. Um, And in the end, you are building a product that is not coherent, that is not focused, that is not actually addressing a problem for most of your customers out there. Then there's the visionary-led companies. Uh, This, you can imagine something like Apple. That's a very good example of Steve Jobs actually being visionary about what he thought that Apple should be and actually doing it very, very successfully. But the reality is that doing this very successfully is not very common. And again, it's something that it doesn't scale well at all, because in the moment that that visionary person leaves the company, then you are going to have a massive problem or how you are going to drive that vision. So it's much better approach to be able to spread the knowledge, the vision and the ownership of those to the rest of the company. Then there's the tech-led company. And here you can see those companies that are looking how to adopt the latest technologies and trend technologies that are out there and start using it for building new products. But many times there is no much real linkage to what the users or the value that you're creating for those users is. And this obviously is not going to scale, scale up very well because you might not have a product that anybody needs. Maybe one example of this is what Santos is happening nowadays with uh, different c- cryptocurrencies where different blockchains are being launched every now and then with different solutions to adopt to do something. But in reality, there's very little market adoption and most of the people are actually betting on them just mainly because it's a good way to speculate with your money. Again, this is going to be a difficult one to scale because you might not have more market fit. And finally, there's the product-led company. In product-led companies, the product strategy is going to connect the business and the technology together. It's going to optimize for business outcomes, but at the same time, it's going to pay attention that what it's building is something that is sustainable, that can help grow and scale the product and the business itself. So how about you? What is the company that you are working in? What type of company is it? Is it a product-led? Is it a sales-led? Probably those are the most common examples that you can see out there. Just let us know in the comments below. The next big topic that she covers in the book is the product management career ladder or career path. Here she talks about the different roles, but the main thing that she's talking about is about what is the focus of the different roles of a product manager from starting when you are in the more junior positions where you are more tactical and very focused on the execution and the day-to-day tasks. Whereas when you're growing with your career, being in more senior positions, you actually start to be more operational, looking more at the overall picture of product management. And when you are going to like really, really senior positions and executive positions, for example, CPOs, where you are actually being very, very strategic and potentially visionary, looking at how you are building the business, how you are having a portfolio of products that serve and bring value to customers. And it also translates into a valuable business for the company. Another topic that she talks a lot is about the product kata. And I would recommend you to read more about it. But in a quick summary, I would say that the product kata will help you to make sure that all the product management steps are covered in the process. So making sure that you're creating those habits that are going to help you to build those products that your users need. So the product kata is a process to uncover the right solution from a problem solving standpoint. So what it will do is that it will uncover the right thing to build and the habits that you will have to have in order to get it built. And of course, one of the important things of building products is that you are able to measure and make sure that they're bringing value to your customers. And here she talks about some of her favorite metrics, mentioning the R metrics and the hard metrics. And as a wrap up about the CADA, why it's important is that you have to fall in love with the problems that your users have. What any 
customer out there or user out there, what they don't want is yet another app, yet another website, yet another place that they have to go and check for information, for uh, guidance, for whatever it is. What they need is an app that actually solves the problem. If you are doing that, they definitely will go and use it. If you are just another app in the App Store, nobody's going to care. She also spends quite some time about how to organize teams within your company. And here she talks about how can you focus, and especially when you are talking about uh, products that are have existed already for some time and they're providing value and being a viable business for customers, where you have to separate maybe in teams that are focusing more on maintaining and making sure that the product continues running and that users are able to still get value out of it, whereas maybe adding some minor uh, features to it. And other teams that are looking more into the future, that are looking more in researching what is going to be the new features that you are be going to be able to build into that product in the future. The teams that are going to make sure that the product has a future and it doesn't get stalemate into just uh, the value proposition that it has at this point and not being able to evolve that over time. Because as we know, things change, technology change, the needs of the customer change over time. So you're going to have to be able to adapt to those new needs and have to be able to potentially even modernize the product that you built in the beginning. Bear in mind that these teams don't have to get stuck into just one of those areas. It might be very frustrating for a maintenance team to always be just doing maintenance and nothing else. So you have to figure out how you are going to potentially be rotating the roles and maybe sometimes those uh, research and maintenance focus are switching between the teams so everybody gets to try and do something new. Next, she also talks about culture and rewards in the company. I mix both of them because kind of they're related. The company culture is going to be very important, especially building a product culture within the company that people understand that you are there to bring value to your customers, not to just make a ton of money based on the commissions of your sales or your bonuses or whatever it is. That is going to be key for having a successful team and a very committed team on the vision that you are trying to achieve. And of course, as a product-led company, you have to help others understand what your goals are, what you are doing for your customers, how you're solving their problems and what your vision is. And very linked to the culture is going to be the rewards that you are giving to your team. Many companies have and still are focused on just building or giving rewards based on the features that are being created or developing the product or on the number of sales that you are having. But this, the problem with these ones, this type of rewards is that they are very short goal terms for the company. Usually they don't help you to advance the strategy. And yes, it might be very important for especially a startup in the very beginning when they're trying to probably survive when they don't have any revenue. But when you have a company that's somehow relatively mature, it's good to pivot and change the way of doing these rewards because what you want to be able to reward is how you are advancing towards your strategy, how you are advancing towards your vision and how you are advancing towards solving the problems of your users. So if you as a product manager or whoever you are watching this video are, are a person that is looking all the time how to deliver the next thing, deliver the next feature, but never having the time to actually sit down, think, why are we doing this? Talk with the customers, understand how you're going to build it in a proper way that is actually going to solve their needs. Probably this book is for you. And as you can imagine, it is a book. So she covers many other topics and in much more detail of what I can do here in this 15 to 20 minutes video. So I still recommend you to go and check out the book because it's an excellent book that probably you're going to find lots of value and will help you to escape that build trap. And I will say that if you were inspired by Marty Kagan, see what I did there, you will love this book because it's really kind of a very inspirational book as well in the same level as Marty Kagan's is. At least that's from my point of view. So how about you? Have you read the book? Have you checked it out? Have you found it interesting? Let us know in the comment below. I have reviewed several books about product management, so you can take a look to them here. I will see you in the next one. And remember, stay safe.